Hi everyone, this is Chris Grasso with the IndieSpirituals.com and I'm thrilled to have uh, Tammy Hudman and Don Jose Ruiz with me today as my guests. Hi guys, how are you? Hi Chris. Hi Chris, it's awesome to be here this morning. What a good way to wake up. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so you guys are in California on the West Coast. I'm in Connecticut, so it's just over 9 o'clock for Tammy and Jose and uh, just after noon here in Connecticut. And for our viewers, just so they know, I've noticed there's a little bit of a delay, um, but not much. So um, just wanted to let our viewers know that. Um, what I'm going to do before we get into the interview is I'd like to let the viewers know a little bit about each of you. So I'm going to read both of your bios, and then we're going to hop into the interview. So Tammy Hudman is an artist, writer, yoga teacher, and mindfulness master in constant practice. She has a graduate degree in the science of behavior and mental health and spent over 10 years working in that field. She is a board certified coach and enjoys coaching people to deeper awareness and mindful living. She recently published a book in partnership with Jose titled Ripples of Wisdom, which we will discuss in the interview. She has traveled around the world teaching alongside Jose and studying with his father, Don Miguel Ruiz, for the past four years learning and studying the wisdom of the Toltec. Don Jose's bio reads as, In 2010, Don Jose Ruiz finished, or I'm sorry, released his first book, The Fifth Agreement, in partnership with his father, Don Miguel Ruiz. Following this publication, Don Jose began traveling around the world, delivering his positive message of motivation and change to people all over the United States, South America, Mexico, Israel, Japan, and Europe. Wow. Uh, his message is changing lives and bringing people closer to themselves more than ever before. Don Jose inspires, uh, lives by sharing the wisdom of his family lineage through his own life experiences. He enjoys working with people of all faiths and cultures and sees all men and women as equal. Don Jose shows his love and gratitude for his life through his teaching and feels it's a blessing to be alive. He continues to travel around the world spreading positivity, motivation, and creative growth through his inspiring lectures. You guys are doing some really amazing things in the world. Oh, it's a service, brother. The service. Service. That's what I'm all about, too, so that resonates for me for sure. So <clears throat> what I wanted to start out doing was really talking about how the two of you met and going back a little bit, if you don't mind, talking about meeting up, um, from in the beginning, and now here you guys are writing books together, doing workshops together. It's a really beautiful thing that you're able to do that. So I'd love to hear a little bit of that story, if you guys don't mind talking a little bit about that. You want to begin, or should I begin? <laughs> All right. Well, one of the beautiful things is that we both were married before meeting each other for 10 years. Mm. And after that, you know, we both separated and started doing our own dream, our individual dream. So one day, my uh, Tammy went to attend one of my father's um, uh, journeys in Teotihuacan, Mexico, and I also was included in that trip. Mm. So one day, I was climbing up the Pyramid of the Sun, and she was already on the top. I didn't know that. But the moment that I reached the top, I looked into those beautiful eyes. <laughs> I don't know what drove me, you know, just went beyond the nervous system here, just, you know, yeah. I knew I had to just look deeper into those eyes, and I gave her a, a little kiss. And from that moment, you know, We've been inseparable. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. And so, Tammy, how's the experience been for you? And, and to go from that to now co-creating a book and, and doing these workshops and just being able to be of service together and share this with the world. Well, I was just in my graduate program at uh, the university, and one of my professors suggested that I attend one of uh, Don Miguel Ruiz's workshops, maybe for a little gift for myself for graduating. <laughs> nice. And so I decided to, I had read the books, you know, several years before, but, you know, I was so full of knowledge that I didn't, I wasn't really into it at that, at that moment. Right. But, um, so I, so I went and, um, I, you know, I'd been single for 10 years. I, I was a single mom, raised two children, going to school, working, running a business, and um, I just hadn't really dated much. And so when I went there, I was 
I wasn't necessarily looking for anything. I had no expectation. I just went for myself just to have some fun, you know, and yeah. to give myself a little gift. And so it was kind of shock when he kissed me on top of the pyramid of the sun. I didn't know quite what to think. I didn't know if he was just going around doing that to everyone. Or, <laughs> you know, if that's part of the ritual. <laughs> I'm not sure. But, yeah, it was pretty amazing and, and quite romantic. You know, oh. I, I just didn't ever expect that. So. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And so you guys have come together and you wrote uh, a book called Ripples of Wisdom, which... Um, I wanted to talk, obviously, get into that first. Um, on the back of the book, I really appreciate where it says on the back jacket, it says, bring heaven into your daily existence. Find the infinite within you. Use the truth to find peace, happiness, and change. That's beautiful. What I would love to do, if you guys don't mind, is break down each of those sentences. So let's start with bring heaven into your daily existence. For our viewers, how do we do that? You know, by the way, first, let me mention that the word Toltec means artist. Right, so yes. So, in our point of view, everyone's an artist. Yes. And when uh, we have the awareness that we can create, you know, the art that will inspire us to live life happily, then we start beginning, you know, doing an action of heaven and earth. Right. And what will we do in heaven and earth is create everything from our hearts that gives us pleasure, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the beautiful things to create what you want to do, to break any doubt to break any, you know, justification, any excuse, and just take the action and manifest, because that's what we're here for, and the more we manifest, the more we feel happy, and this is all by being our authentic self. That's one of the most easiest things to be in life, but of course, I'm going to say, hey, that's not true. It's very difficult to be our authentic self. No. What is difficult is to pretend. Yes, and from that point on, when we speak our word, we can listen to it, because, you know, when we pray, we, we, we listen, you know, we listen to our prayer. The thing is what in prayer we're making, what intent we're making, what message we're giving. And when we have a, the, the message of our authentic self, that's when we're like leaving heaven on earth. Mm. Right, right. Did you have anything, Tammy, you would like to add to that? Yes, um, I think that just, uh, you know, bringing peace and love into your own existence is just a choice. You choose to feel that inside, you know. You choose each day, each moment, just what you're going to do that makes you feel good or what brings you joy in that moment. Mm. And that's what I've done over the past few years. Um, you know, I instead of trying to please other people or trying to find something outside of me to make me happy, I realized that it was inside. Everything was inside. Sure. And so I learned how to tap down inside and find find that truth and find that joy and find that happiness. Mm, beautiful. So the second part, it says, find the infinite within you. And this is something I think it's beautiful that you, a lot of, basically all the great contemplative or wisdom traditions really agree on this point. You know, underneath everything there's the infinite. There, there's the relative truth, the material that, you know, here's my body and I'm speaking to you guys in your body. But underneath this, we have this infinite core. You know, you might call it Dharmakaya in Buddhism or Brahman in Vedanta or Godhead in mystic Christianity. It has many different names, but I love, you know, you guys say the infinite. So in, in your tradition or your lineage or your experience, how do we cultivate that? How do we find that infinite within ourselves? You know, when we close our eyes, we step into the place where dreams are born. Mm. And then for that we put attention. And then when we start to put attention in the, the silence between each word, we can feel like so you're planting something. You're planting something into the full ground. It's like imagining that we're in the middle of the universe. And all of a sudden we find a door. And we open that door and then we enter the room. The room we enter is the room we enter every time we close our eyes. Because right there in the point, you find the silence, you find the space. You can, you know, if you're having a bad day, you come to this point, you tranquilize it, and you can feel, you know, very, very at peace with yourself. It's like watching the ocean. That's why when many people, you know, say they have a death experience, you know, all of a sudden they become enlightened. They become, they become enlightened because it's like something giving them a big slap in the face, saying you're still alive, and return to that moment. Return to that moment, you know, of consciousness, of awareness. 
And from this point on, it's like a step in, you know, coming back to the body, but not like the uh, superstitious step, you know, that I got a, I need an exorcist of something inside of me, please, you know, so bring <laughs> the egg, bring the smoke. No, it's the, it's the step in that your awareness comes into place. Right. You, it's like coming back home and you see like a temple being corrupted and you would tear down the temple and rebuild it in however long it takes you. But it's to find that infinite within you knowing that, you know, this body, you know, is lent to us. We're here for a vacation. That the real thing that we are is infinite. Right. You know, it's that energy. There's no language. There's no words in that world. You know, it's just a vibration. That's why when we feel positivity and negativity, when we go into negativity, our life is, you know, chaos. When we go positivity, no matter what problems come our way, you know, we're bringing that infinite into reality. This is why Totec are mean artists, because we're creating with this awareness. Now, the beautiful thing about it is how we can express it, you know, and this is our own way. That's why when you tap into the infinite, you get inspired to what to create. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. I love what you said about that, that field, you know, where you, you can't, you can't really put words to it or the experience, you know, it's just, it is the all. And the thing is, it's always already happening um, here. We just need to remember it or reawaken ourselves to it. And it's, it's a really beautiful thing. And I enjoy seeing science even now is, is coming in and, you know, they have what, like the unified field theory, which is essentially putting a scientific term to what the sages of ancient India have known for thousands of years and, and you know, just great um, seers from all lineages. So it's a really exciting thing to see happening, and I'm glad you mentioned that. So the third part is use the truth to find peace, happiness, and change. So if either one of you can elaborate on that, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> well, one of the beautiful things about change, you know, is having the awareness. Somebody came to me and said, Jose, will you be my teacher? And I said, uh, with honesty and humbleness and respect, I say, no. He goes, why? It's because if I'm your teacher, I'm going to teach you to be me. Mm. You need to learn how to be you by your own awareness. And from this point on, it's where we can transform because if we want to change for somebody else, we will never change. Mm -hmm. If we want to be approved by somebody else and not be ourselves, we will never change because there always will be that resistance. That the moment that you're there to serve you, you know, that's when everything transforms. And it's when my personal life, I, I, hit a, I hit a wall and say, you know what? I know what the meaning of life for me is. Mm -hmm. And it's to take care of Jose. Because I know what makes Jose happy. And I know what makes Jose suffer. Mm -hmm. And how do I know this information is because... I am Jose, you know, right. and when I take that responsibility, I can take that discipline and I can eliminate anything I don't want in my life. And from this place, break from the language of complaining, the negative complaining that is like a scorpion that stings itself with its own poison and paralyzes itself. The moment that we take awareness and responsibility to not do that anymore, our habits will transform. And, you know, one of my friends says, well, how do I do it? And I said, so simple with honesty and discipline. And he says, is there any other way? Can I put my face somewhere else? And it never <laughs> happen for me? No. No matter what road we take, at the end, we take this responsibility. And this is what we call in the Totec, the angel, the messenger being of service, you know, to the love of the life that is life itself. Mm. That, you know, we're so intelligent that we'll create any justification, any excuse, you know, why not to take action? But this is when we really need to hear the messenger within us. What's the message that we're giving to ourselves? And especially what's the message we're giving to the people we say we love with all our heart. And this point on, we begin serving the two masters, you know, like the old master said to me once, says one time an apprentice came to me with two, with two pumas, one represent the negativity, one percent the positivity, master, master, which one will win? And the master said, whichever one you feed. So, at the point for transformation, what comes up is whatever we feed, that becomes our reality. So from this point on, we can work on the fifth agreement, is to be skeptical, but learn to listen. Not to be skeptical in a social position that I'm more intelligent than anybody else, but to be skeptical of our own negativity, of our own poison, of our own negative habits. And when we get awareness of this, we can transform because we know what we're changing and we don't live in blind faith, but we have faith. And this will allow us to think impeccably because mm -hmm. One moment that we begin thinking impeccably is when we totally master the language of positivity. Beautiful. Tammy, did you have anything you wanted to add before we move on? That was, I mean, I know that was a beautiful uh, 
summary, but I'd love to hear if you have anything. <laughs> right. I have that. Right. <laughs> um, the, the way I think I look at truth is, I, you know, I used to do, uh, do domestic violence perpetrator groups. So I had these groups of, uh, you know, these big, you know, gruff, mostly gruff men. Sometimes there were women in there as well, but um, one thing that I did with them was I was I had them really tap into themselves and, you know, we used to do this activity where I would say, you know, how do you feel and where are you feeling it? And they were so funny. They did not really like that activity at all. But the reason was is because they didn't really know how they felt. Mm. They didn't know where, you know, where even anything felt in their body. They were so up in their head or so outside of themselves that they could not even express. And so that was such a good activity. And, and it really brought them all together as one, you know, to finally be able to, to do that activity and not be embarrassed and not be, you know, uh, upset or, or um, you know, just to, just to be able to express themselves in that way it really brought them a, a, just a pitch of truth, you know? Right. And so I'm, I'm hoping with that, that they were able to maybe tap into more truth of who they, who they really are. Because I think it's very important that we are our authentic selves. And sometimes we don't even know what that is. And so it's really, um, it's really a great awakening when you realize, oh, you know, this is who I am and, it, and it's okay. And it's beautiful. And mm. it's okay that that's, you know, I can just go ahead and be who that, be that person. So yeah. <laughs> really well said, really, really well said. So you guys are also working on another book that's not out yet. I believe it comes out in October, and I'm really intrigued by the title. It's called My Good Friend, the Rattlesnake, Stories of Lost, Truth, and Transformation. And I would love if you guys can talk a little bit about that, what the book's about, a little about the title. Uh, it sounds sounds great. Well, the story of the, my good friend, the rattlesnake, is because one of the greatest teachers that, you know, that I have or we have is the rattlesnake. It's because when it's uh, young, it can't control its poison. If it bites you, it doesn't know what dosage it's giving you. It's just like a hurt human, you know? Mm. A woman that certainly doesn't know what is giving poison at all. But then later, as the rattlesnake grows, it knows how to control its poison. It's not saying that it doesn't have poison anymore, it just it controls it, just like we humans have the you know, negative memories that we don't act on them anymore because we know how to filter them, so we're controlling our poison. And one other thing about the rattlesnake is that it sheds its skin, mm. you know, and when it sheds its skin, it just leaves it behind and continues on, you know, dragging itself wherever it goes. But then at the other hand, us humans, when we shed our skin, it's like having those negative memories and we just you know, carrying them wherever we go. We carry them and we feel all the negativity. And, you know, it's one of the beautiful things that really teach to let go of things. And this book is uh, about my life because many people have asked me, you know, how do you get to this point of view to, you know, co-write co the fifth agreement with my father, co-teach with him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, say, you know, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a master. I'm not a shaman or anything. I'm just a kid from a bad neighborhood who got a, another opportunity, you know, to live life. And I'm grateful for my dad's teachings, but I want to share in this book all the obstacles that I have because every time that I fought, I conquered, you know, I'm back, you know, it's going to the enlightenment world now. And, you know, my dad said, welcome back home. But then again, something happened in life and I went back down. So in this book, there's a lot of the stories with my dad going, welcome back home again, my son. But uh, it's yes. all about since I was like 11 years old or 10 years old until the point that I am right now. That's great. I actually, I spoke with your brother, Miguel, on Tuesday, I believe. Um, I did an interview with him, and I had the pleasure of hearing a bit about you guys growing up and how, you know, you you didn't automatically just click with your father and his work and his teachings. Um, and, you know, he mentioned you guys were into the music that you're into, and I know you're still into, but... Uh, that w that was really cool because I could really resonate with that. You know, uh, we're we're all the similar age. It sounds like even though you know we grew up in different areas, we had similar experiences. And you know, I had to go through my own trials and tribulations to get where I am, as did you, and as did Miguel. And it's just really inspiring that there are people like yourself and him out there. You know, now being able to share this work and let people know that it it gets better. Um, which it kind of segues nicely into um, something I'd love to ask you guys about. 
is spirituality for this younger generation of truth seekers that's emerging. You know, there's there's kind of a, a passing of the torch, it seems, where a lot of the elder teachers are, you know, they're getting up there in age, and there's kind of a new bracket of younger teachers, which I, I feel you and Miguel fall into, and uh, and many other great teachers. So what what would you guys say, you know, to these younger generations of truth seekers that are just starting out in their journey and their path? What, what, um, you know, what guidance could you give them without being a teacher? What guidance would you, or suggestions would you give? It's just to live in honesty. Hmm. To simply live in honesty, because if you don't judge yourself, nobody else can judge you and the judgment will exist to exist in your mind. And then from that point on, you can see who's talking the negative language that you don't want in your life because you respect yourself so much. But it's always to honesty. You know, growing up, I can see many people not being honest with themselves, you know, pretending to, you know, pretend that ego that they have, pretend that master character, you know, that attains so much to spirituality, but only by words, by not leading it. And they lost it so much. So, you know, this is one of the things I say of this generation of new spirituality. Just be yourself. You know, the moment that you stop being yourself, you know, you're not serving the love of your life. And, you know, everything is spiritual. Yes. Everything is spiritual. Nobody can tell you what you're doing is, is not spiritual because it's spirit in action. And I have this little example that I had that I share with, with my friends. It's one time I was with a great Tibetan bull master in Canada. And uh, after a lecture, she said to me, would you want to, I share with you an experience uh, session that I have, I want to give to you. I said, of course, I will accept it with love. She laid me down on the floor, got like 15 Tibetan bowls around me, and started hitting them one by one. And to one point, she started singing Om. She was like, Om, every time she hit a Tibetan bowl with a beautiful voice, Om. And this went up to like more than half an hour. After she finished, like it took me like a few minutes to open my eyes. And when I opened them, I had this big smile. I see her face, and she said, How do you like the session? I said, Oh, I loved it very much. It reminded me of an Ozzy Osbourne concert that I attended. <laughs> and, and when I said those words, you know, her work got dis her first got distorted. I said, no, I don't mean to be really disrespectful. Let me explain why. It's because one time I was in an Ozzy Osbourne concert, and uh, I was in the middle of the stadium, and all of a sudden he sings the song, Mother, I'm Coming Home. Mm. And the chorus of that song goes, oh, Mother, I'm coming home, I'm coming Oh, home, I'm coming. And that moment, I heard the home many times in my head, and I felt this energy from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head. And then I look around, and there are 65,000 brothers and sisters metalheads oming at the same time without awareness they're oming. They're just singing that song with all their passion. And, you know, that was like the spiritual ex experience that I ever had because that's what I love, you know, to feel the energy because it's the passion we love what to do. So, you know, no one can tell you what you're doing and gives you pleasure. It's not a spiritual experience because it is for you, mm -hmm. you know. And this one respect any other brother and sister's, you know, spiritual experience. And this is way of generation doesn't have to have any word of God. That's really word of belief. It's word of egos. And, you know, we're coming to a point of truth. So in this moment, what really matters is, you know, how well we really express ourselves, the messenger within us. And like they say in the Peruvian dream, you know, we're children of the sun, hmm. and we grow up just to be like Heavenly Father, just shine that light, yeah. you know, I just feel the co-creation inside of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned the Ozzy thing, because that's that's important for this the this younger generation to hear. You know, I write in my book about Van Halen and Slayer, you know, and, and in, uh, in my new book, I write about an experience at a Motorhead concert, and I have these spiritual experiences, and at hip-hop shows, and and like you said, you know, it's all spiritual. It's it's all, for me, the way I experience it is what I say, ornaments of spirit. Everything's an ornament of spirit. And it helps me to cultivate that deeper relationship. So I'm so glad you said that. And Tammy, I'd love to hear any feedback you have on that question. Well, I have two children who are, you know, one's uh, just turned 20 and the other one is 23. Yeah. And the thing that's amazing about them is they're so open now. They're just so open. The generation now are just, you know, everything is on the internet. They just are, they're open to any kind of message and they're, and they're so skeptical. So the skeptical but learn to listen agreement is just already in their mind. They, they already question everything. And if they have a 
question they go on the internet and they look it up and so yeah, right, it's pretty right. amazing and my son yeah my son who is uh he's just turned 20 um when he was in high school he was having a conversation with his friends and he's also a musician a really actual actually an amazing musician you know i'm not biased at all <laughs> <laughs> right right but um he, <laughs> He was having a conversation with his friends, and I was just kind of eavesdropping, of course. And he said to them, what do you want to be remembered for, you know, after, you know, when you get older? And I heard one of his friends say, well, I want to be remembered by my music, the music that I write. And the other friend said, "Um, I want to be remembered by how much money I have. And my son said, well... I want to be remembered by how well I treated others. And, wow. you know, of course, my heart expanded. I was like, wow. <laughs> Proud mama What moment. a great kid. But, yeah, they're, they're all very open, yeah. I think. And they're really open for these messages. So you guys are doing a great thing. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, it's really, it is. It's inspiring to see so many people that are really opening up in the younger generation and interested. And, and, uh, and I think it's a wonderful sign of our time. So, it's uh, like Jose said right in the beginning. It's an honor to be able to be in this position of service and help with that, you know. And, and to say it's an honor doesn't even do it justice. It just, you know, it, it's in the heart. It gets so warm and uh, and a lot of gratitude around that. So, thank you guys for that. I loved it. Um, let's talk about your website, which I am really digging. Theuniverseofnow.com, and there is so much going on over there. I would. Love to know what inspired that vision. You know, if just tell me all about it. Well, um, sorry, our dog. <laughs> um, what inspired it was Jose just came up with that idea probably about five, three, I don't know how many years, four, four years ago. Yeah. And he built the website, and he wanted it to be a place for artists to just share their art, poetry, stories even, you know, artwork, and nothing ever happened with it. I don't know why. It just didn't ever um, happen. It was always there. It just didn't, you know, nobody really ever posted anything. And so I saw that. I was like, what is this? This is so cool. Let's do something with it. So um, I just thought, let's just make a place where people can write articles, poems, whatever, you know. We love to have writers come and submit whatever, you you know, whatever. We just like, like to show people's art, so... I think it's, it's, it's really fun. It's been really a fun project. That's great. So, Jose, when you created it, what, what were you thinking? Were, you know, were, was it just an a inspiration out of nowhere you had, or had you been thinking about it for a while, or how was it for, for you on your end? Well, it was, so, it was so beautiful because I was actually sleeping on a magazine, Yeah. and I was looking out the window, and then I got inspired, you know, like uh, I got inspired just by uh, looking at, 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 at the kids wanting to give messages, or people who wanted to give messages. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what, the teacher is right here. And then I go back home for the weekend and I turn the television on and I see this commercial by Jenny Craig saying, you know, we used to put artists, celebrities to sell our thing. But now we want to just put everybody who, you know, common people to everyday life, you know, to share their stories. And I say that, you know, everything works together so beautifully, they get inspiration. So I said, this is what the new age of spirituality it is, is that everyone, you know, is a messenger. Everyone has a voice to share. Everyone has a story to inspire. And this is what the whole universe of now it is. It's like a moment where one inspires one another. And, uh, you know, anyone is welcome if they want to submit their stories. We can, you know, pray on. But I think this is like the, the foundation of the new life because it's it's like a web that's going to get spreading, spreading. And the more positivity is get put out there, you know, it's going to be ready for anyone who's ready to listen. We just have to put it out there. And, right. you know, this is a great invitation that came from nowhere. Just, let's do it. That's wonderful. And I know there's another website, you know, happening. But we're all working for the same boss, you know. Yes, very well said. Absolutely. That's, that's a great, great sentiment for sure. So... What else, just like on a personal level for you guys, I wanted to talk, I know we already talked a little about music, but I would love to hear what inspires you guys musically, like who are some of your favorite musicians, and then after that, both I'm interested both in music and then authors or books. Inspiration, it could be either now or throughout your life. Wherever you that question goes for you, I would love to hear the answer. So. Um. 
Musically, I think uh, as a young person, I grew up in the 80s. So all of the 80s, you know, heavy metal, Good stuff. rock, Bon Jovi, um, <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy, Motley Crue, you know, the crazy stuff, Metallica. Yeah. Um, I love all that. It's, it's it's like a meditation for me if I'm listening to it. You know, I, I, just, I just love it. It's, the words are amazing. I know people don't really listen to the words, but if you really you know, dig in and listen to the words. They're very spiritual and um, beautiful. Yeah. So, you know, very poetic. Yeah. And as far as authors go, of course, the Ruizes are inspiring. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, probably my biggest inspiration was uh, Clarissa Pinkola Estes, Women Who Run With the Wolves. Mm. Um, she really inspires me. Um, I love all of the, the metaphorical stories that she tells and, and you know, the, the beauty in the, in the feminine. I think it's very important. And um, I think that, you know, the world has kind of lost that a little bit. I think it's beautiful that it's coming back. And yeah. I think it will bring a lot of balance to the world and a lot of peace if we allow that to come into the, into the you know, into fruition. Mm. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, Tammy. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things that I love about music and experiences is going to an Iron Maiden concert <laughs> because you know everyone who goes to an Iron Maiden concert, you know, it's just like family. It's just like a the spiritual experience begins the moment that you get out of your car or get out of the train yeah. and you just walk up and you sing the songs with strangers, you know, pointing the, the songs at strangers and that comes out of life. So that's one of the beautiful experiences that I have with Iron Maiden plus the lyrics they put into. Yeah. And I love Morrissey. Yeah. How that artist just pushes his passion to words. He has encouraged just like, you know, and it relates so much to 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 the where I, I grew up grew up from too, because he just puts a lot of passion to every like a soundtrack, you know, like you listen to a music video with any of their songs. Mm-hmm. It's so beautiful. And then I like the Caipanes, it's a Mexican rock that puts shamanism and uh, awareness from the from, from from the Mexico City, from the city where they grew up, mm. into one beautiful expression of art, you know, that one can understand in the, in the Latin community. And to read, my favorite authors are actually, you know, comic books. Nice. I love comic books. Yeah. Since I was little, I couldn't get hooked on a book, but in comic books, it was so beautiful because anyone can put their imagination there. You know, the, the whole religious books, the mysterious books are in the comic books, yeah. you know. I just love to read them, and you know, and right now what's happening in the movies with the with the X Men, with the Avengers, with the Batman movie. Oh man, it's like I'm a kid in a candy <laughs> story, you know. <laughs> yes, it's one yeah. of the beautiful things that I really love. And of course, you know, I I, I love um, I love positive uh, positive books that have poems, mm. especially the ones from artists, you know, like a, like especially the Bob Marley, how he puts his lyrics out there and just coming from the heart. And this, you know, this is a big uh, teaching for me because one of the things that, you know, I learned how to be a public speaker, I didn't go to school or anything like that. My father just jumped me into the stage, you know, and, you know, he said to me, never prepare, just let your heart open. Mm-hmm. And every time I read Bob Marley's, you know, poetry, you know, it's just like an open hearted artist, you know. Yeah. That's what I like about Morris. He's just like a hard working artist, you know, yeah. and Maiden also, you know, Steve Harris. And, you know, you go on all the different musicians and artists. And this is what we're here to do too, you know? Even if we don't write books, even if we don't make music, this is what we're here to do. Just let that thing out of us because when left out of us, we feel, you know, we want to do it again and we want to do it again. But that's living, you know? Yeah, so yeah. we're here in life to make a masterpiece of art. That's why I'm so grateful for all the comic books, all the music, because, you know, it's like having a new age, you know, spiritual um, spirit, you know, guiding us, you know. Yeah. And this one, we give the symbol to it. It's, it's, it's our story. That's, That's great, awesome. a beautiful one. That's great. Do you have a favorite hero and supervillain? Well, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Batman. And then dark side. <laughs> mm, nice, nice. How do you? Are you? Uh, how did you feel about the Ben? <laughs> how did you feel about the Ben Affleck casting of Batman in the upcoming Batman and Superman film? Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's. I think that's a fair, fair, yes. a fair call. So, guys, before we wrap it up, it, I know you have the book coming out in October, which we talked about, and. Um, 
I was actually speaking with Miguel, like I said, and he mentioned that you and your father are doing a retreat in Mexico. Is that next month? Yes, in June twenty, June nineteenth to the twenty second. Great. We're gonna be in the pyramids of Teotihuacan, Mexico. Beautiful. And this is one of beautiful opportunities because you know every time I get to be with my father, you know it's like you know living it again when I was receiving it again. That's why, like you were saying earlier, to give us to be of service, you know, that's not even the word doesn't even you know give it because every time we we express it, we get to share it. It's like receiving it again, you know. It's like yeah. every time I get to share that, it's like my father. This is my father's speech or my grandma's speech. And this journey, my father will be coming. So, you know, for me, it's always exciting when he comes because we never have a plan. He just says, let's go this direction and we go that direction. <laughs> That's awesome. Really cool. So besides that, do you guys have anything else coming up uh, for the rest of the year that you're working on or workshops or anything else you'd like to share with viewers? Well, we, we, we have the universe of that. We've mentioned it and we invite writers to send us their articles. And we we publish it, but at the same time, we are very excited about this new book about uh, my good friend the Stank and to be sharing with this and be going to your to your neighborhoods because we're looking very much forward to looking to the local bookstores. And after that, we're getting back into writing some children's books and our next book that's going to be basically about relationships. Awesome! That sounds great. So the uh, my good friend the rattlesnake was I correct that comes out in October people can start looking for that. Yes. Yes. Cool. All right. Awesome. Um, yeah. Great. Well, you guys, I can't thank you enough for your time. Um, I really admire and honor and am grateful for the work that you guys are bringing into the world. Thank you so much for that, and thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me today. I'm really appreciative of that and uh, and I'm just glad to be connected with you guys in general. Oh, same way. It's, it's, it feels good to finally speak to you personally <laughs> and I look forward to be together meeting and maybe one day we'll do a lecture together. That is something I would be so happy to do. So I, I really cross my fingers that we can find a way to make that happen because I think it could be a beautiful thing for sure. All right, let's make it happen. The seeds already planted in the dirt. <laughs> All right, there it is. I, I, I love it. So I look forward to it. Well, you guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. And again, thank you for everything you're doing. All right, thank you, brother. Thank you.